I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my life living in my own Nicaragua. Today, I'm going to be doing a relatively simple video from the office because when you're watching this, I'm actually heading out to Managua with my kids. I'm going to be recording, I hope, if everything goes well, the police parade that is going on in, uh, in Managua today and uh, tried that a week ago or two weeks ago, and it ended up being a different date than we thought. It is today, we got confirmation, so I'm gonna head out, and my kids are coming with me because they love going to restaurants in Managua, so they're coming with me. So, we're gonna be talking today about the, the concept of where can you afford to live when you're looking to become an expat, looking to move abroad, or whatever, because I think there's a couple approaches to this that are important uh, mindsets and can make things a little bit easier. I can't go out and walk today because I walked a lot yesterday, um, and I'm going to be walking in Managua, so I need to rest my foot, and I need to get this video up because I'm going to be in Managua. So, sorry that we're doing another one in the office, but we did get a couple out walking around over the last few days, so we're going to get to that right after the bump. So the question comes up on a pretty regular basis. Different people ask me this. This is nothing specific, but I do get this on a regular basis. And the question is, can I afford to live in Nicaragua? And then sometimes people have a very specific budget. Sometimes they um, are, are being very vague and I don't have much to work with. But importantly, I, everyone has a different number that they need for what it takes for them to live. This is an important concept because one person asks, can I live someplace? And, and they mean why well, I have this certain level of opulence. I'm not saying it's crazy, just they have a certain level of it and they expect to be able to go to restaurants and they want people to drive them around or they want to own a car. And sometimes it's like, well, of course I meant I would own a car. How could that not be? But for a lot of people, the idea that you would own a car on a tight budget is not really there. They would automatically think that they wouldn't do that. So the idea of what it takes for someone to survive can vary pretty wildly uh, depending on their perspective of, of what it is that they're looking for. Now, technically, and they, what does it take to keep shelter and food and all that, right? And you're, and you're not planning on being homeless. What does the absolute minimum you be able to, may be able to come up with? But even that, we're like, okay, in what area, with what, like how many people can you cook? What, or do you eat meat? Like a lot of things add up. It's very, very difficult to come up with a number like that. So, um, and we've talked about this in some other videos, uh, but this is very specific. What I want to talk about is the idea of the lowest cost or, or relative cost uh, for living. And so when this question comes up, and then that always surprises me. Um, now, of course, if you know nothing about Nicaragua, right, then the question, it makes sense, right? Well, how expensive is it? Um, but very importantly, everybody has a different cost of living experience. This is not something that my cost of living will not directly apply to you. I can tell you as, as, as a basic ratio what my life costs here versus my life back in the United States or in other countries that I've lived in, that I can do. No problem. It'll be super accurate, but not super useful to you. I mean, it's kind of useful. You get a comparison. But every country that you live in, every place that you live, every living situation you have is going to have different factors. So when I lived in Greece, for example, I lived in a really expensive house. It happened to be a house designed by a famous architect. It was built in the Ottoman era. It was in the middle of a cool village on an amazing island. And you put everything together and it was like, well, this was a really expensive space. And then the grocery store that was near us, which would have kept the price pretty low to live there, was closed because of when we lived there. And so just all these things ended up making it relatively expensive for the area, uh, but that's fine. Like we weren't there to be the absolute lowest price. We were there because we wanted to experience that village and that house and it was worth it. It was fantastic. But if you were comparing how cheaply can you live in Greece, well, living on an island is not one of the ways to keep the price down. Living in a really amazing house that's like an antique, but redone and very modern and incredibly well uh, pointed. No, that's not a way to do it. Um, you know, living in an area that's so remote that you always have to drive everywhere, not a good way to go. A lot of these things, they just add up. But depending on what you're looking at, everyone's experience is different. If we'd lived in mainland Greece, if we'd gotten a small apartment, we could have cut our costs in half or in a quarter quarter, right? Completely different, uh, completely different experience could have been had if that's what we were trying to do. And living here in Nicaragua is no different. If you want to get a small apartment that's just barely big enough for one person and never use air conditioning and maybe never use a fan, live in 
Matagalpa, Hinotega, uh, do all your own cooking, never go out, don't own a car, don't need to like really, really work to be minimal, you can get this incredibly low price. And, and just everyone falls into a different spot, but what people expect, what their lifestyle is going to be, things that they do will affect that a lot, right? It just, it just varies some. And there's just something you have to accept. But what generally, and again, even this is general, depending on the type of lifestyle that you want, there will be variances for the uh, uh, amount of cost of living differences that you will find. For example, someone who wants to live a uh, a pauper's lifestyle, to, to put it one way, in the United States or versus Nicaragua will find that they're able to do so vastly cheaper in Nicaragua than they can in the United States, which probably goes without saying, but just in case, it needs to be explained. If you are going for the minimum, how little hard currency can I live on in one place or another, Nicaragua is going to demolish the United States in what that, how low that number can go. But if we're talking about what does it take to maintain the average lifestyle of a millionaire in the United States or Nicaragua, you're going to find that I'm sure the Nicaragua number will still be lower, but it's going to be much closer to that, that of the United States, simply because when you have discretionary spending, you're going to be buying a lot more things from like Amazon, for example, and you're going to be able to leverage some of the things that the United States does relatively well and inexpensively, like buying new laptops or buying new just electronics of all kinds of, of things. The U.S. tends to get those cheaper. If you're on a tight budget, you don't tend to buy those things. You buy very little of them. But if you're not on a tight budget, you tend to buy a lot of them. And so that's going to shift things quite dramatically. So for, but for people who are on a budget, assuming this question really only matters for people who are truly on a budget, on a tight budget, um, when you're looking at, can I, can I make it? Can I afford to live in Nicaragua or someplace? The thing that's, that surprises me the most, I think, is, is wherever you're coming from, most of my audience, US or Canada, if you are existing there at all, if you manage to live in that place, and you're saying, I'm taking the budget I have here and, and then moving somewhere else, Almost anywhere you move is going to be less expensive. You're, if you could live those places, then you can almost certainly live somewhere else. Almost anywhere else. And Nicaragua is an extreme case of where anywhere else could be. Of all the places in the Western Hemisphere, while you can make an argument that other places are just as cheap as Nicaragua, it is extremely difficult to make a, a case for someone being cheaper. Yes, Colombia might squeak over the line. Uh, Paraguay gives it a good run for its money. Guatemala is very much in line. But in general, they're all roughly the same. Very difficult to measure between them. And in many ways, you can't measure between them because the kinds of things where you start getting differences as well. Milk's a little bit more here. Eggs are a little bit more over here. And those differences, well, it's going to depend how much milk or eggs you buy. I buy very little milk a large number of eggs compared to most people. And so for us, whoever has the cheaper eggs is going to be more cost effective for us. But for a lot of people, they may go through a lot more milk than they do eggs. And for them, whoever has the cheaper milk is going to be cheaper. Does that make sense? Hopefully. The, the point though, is that whether it's a Nicaragua or a Paraguay or a in Argentina, a Guatemala, there's so many countries that fall into a, a nearly identical cost perspective uh, in on average, at least. These are so inexpensive compared to any reasonable, any reasonable place that you could be coming from that if you're able to make it there, you're going to be able to do just fine in these places. And if you're coming from like the United States, which most people who ask this question are easily 90%, you have so many things that make this so good, right? One is just the, the raw cost of living, housing, so much less. I mean, so much less, uh, 10%, maybe, maybe less, as low as 15 or 20, well, 1 15th or 1 20th of US housing market. That's the first thing for, for affordable housing, not for, not for the, the fancy stuff, but for affordable housing, you're looking at tiny, tiny fractions. You know, you can get into really nice houses here in gated communities for several hundred dollars, like 400, 500, maybe $600. No problem. You can get into, you know, nice yards, three bedrooms, gated community, you know, guards all the time, really nice places. 
if you need to get into, you know, very normal places in the hundreds, sometimes into the two hundreds. Try that in the United States. That same, that first house, that's maybe five, six hundred dollars here, would be two thousand, twenty five hundred in the US per month. And here that, that really low cost place might be six hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred in the United States, not one fifty, two hundred. So these numbers are, are really different. Um, and in some cases it's just wildly, wildly different. And then there's there's lifestyle things. Right here, you can take public transportation. You don't need a car. Now, of course, there are times in the United States where you can use public transportation, but it's very difficult. Very few people are going to be able to pull that off for a lot of things that they do. And if they do, the public transportation costs more. It's more cumbersome to use. Typically here, it's going to cost even less. So you're just going to have all these, this snowball of cost savings. And then your food is going to be cheaper, especially if you're cooking at home and you're going to the market and you're getting really low cost uh, fruits and veg you're going to lower that cost again. But if you're an American, like I was saying, that the average person is, the 90 percentile, is you get this, assuming you actually move to Nicaragua, you get this huge tax benefit that if you're, again, if you're on a budget and you're coming here from the U.S. and those factors come together, that means your salary is not going to be above a certain number, right? Like you just wouldn't be on that tight budget if you had that big salary. So any income, salary income that you may have coming to Nicaragua is going to be tax free. Nicaragua's not taxing you because you didn't earn it here. The United States isn't taxing you because you get a tax credit. Now, if you have capital gains, that kind of stuff, you're going to pay normal taxes in the U.S. and still nothing in Nicaragua. So in some cases, you may get a really good tax advantage in some. It's just a break even. It depends on what you're doing. But those things add up and all those lower cost of living things make it so hard to compete with this region. There's a few countries that compete together, but it makes it so inexpensive. I, I find the question just so surprising. Can I afford to live there? Can you afford not to live here? That, that may be the better question. As long as you are on a budget and you're coming from North America or probably from Europe, I think as long as you are flexible and willing to do the things necessary to adapt to what makes Nicaragua financially make sense, that can include certain types of housing, certain types of views, certain types of food, certain types of lifestyle behaviors. The example we often use is if you want to go to a certain type of, of gym to work out, well, Nicaragua has a lot of gyms, but if you don't like the kind we have and you want to pay for something else, you're going to pay a premium that you may be very surprised by. If that's a huge expense for you, then you may need to consider that in things you're not adaptable to and you need to either pay for that and that's going to hit your budget or Nicaragua's not right for you. All right. So uh, if you are inflexible and you have to have things in a certain style, not of quality, but a style, an approach, you, you really aren't going to be okay getting away from, and this is often going to be based on where you're from, but if you're from New York, you know, the pizza and subs and hamburgers and hot dogs and, and garbage plates and fish fries, the food of New York, if, if those are things that you're not going to be okay not being able to have in the style and quantity that you're used to, um, and those are things I miss from back home, right? If those are things you, you are going to have to replicate, then someplace like Nicaragua is going to be quite expensive. Replicating most of those things here costs quite a bit more than it does to just eat normally. But if you were to eat normally in Nicaragua, you'd find that the food would cost less than a lot of the things you would do in the United States. So it's very important to understand that that flexibility, and this is true anywhere in the world, it's not unique to Nicaragua. Any place you go, if you want to get that low price, you want to be able to take advantage of the place you're living in, you have to adapt to it. Same if you were to go to the United States and say, well, I want to eat Nicaraguan food all the time. That would be very expensive in the United States. Even though the food is very inexpensive in Nicaragua, that same food, that rice and beans, gallo pinto or other things that they do here in Nicaragua, that they do on scale with local ingredients, just naturally, you know, everyone does it. So it's super cheap here in the United States. Those things are not going to be outrageous in most cases, but they will not be cheap like they are here because it's specialty. Sometimes they have to import it. Sometimes they're making it just for you, whatever. So that adaptation is always something that you need to have if you're trying to be on one of those budgets. So flexibility comes into play a lot. And so if you're looking at, for example, the three places that I always use as the low cost places around the world, here in Latin America, especially Central America, one of the lowest costs. Southeast Asia, one of the lowest costs. Eastern Africa, this is the Malawis, the Tanzanias, the Ugandas, that area, super low cost. You take these areas and compare them, and all of them are very inexpensive. None of them have big costs when you live like a local. 
of these, Latin America is probably the most expensive in most cases, if you don't consider the flights to get there. But depending on your lifestyle, the things that you may demand, the things that you may not be comfortable with changing, any one of them may be better for you. If you really like the food of Southeast Asia and you're okay eating that every day, but you don't like the food of Latin America, you wouldn't be fine eating that every day. And one, you're able to just adapt to what's local and cheap. And another, you have to sometimes cater to your personal taste and that's going to be more expensive, then you may find that Southeast Asia is just a way better option for you. And of course, if the reverse is true, then that may make Central America a lot better for you from a cost perspective. There's other factors, of course, and there's, you know, other th for cost as well as things that you like or don't like. So you have to consider a lot of things. But when you're looking at those low cost regions, those kinds of comparisons, what your lifestyle, what your desires are going to cause you to either do like a local or not do like a local, like a local will be major cost factors when you're on a tight budget. So, so the takeaway there is tight budgets are primarily dictated or, or defined by what adaptations are able to be made or desired to be made for that comparison. If you're able to just be like, I'm going to live like a local wherever I go, then it's going to come down to mostly whatever place is closer for you is probably going to be the more cost effective, even though Africa and Asia offer, often are going to beat the Americas in cost of living in raw numbers. If you're coming from Europe or North America, generally to get there is just a lot more cumbersome and expensive. And once you add in the cost of those flights, they don't compete nearly as well. But if you were just teleported there for free, they would generally be a little bit less expensive. But the general idea I was trying to get across in this video, and I'm pretty tired doing this one, so I apologize because I'm just doing this late at night. I got to knock this out so you have this for when I go to Managua so I can spend my time in Managua hanging out with my kids and focused on filming the next episode for you guys. Um, the, the big overarching idea here is that if you're coming from one of these higher cost locations, Europe, North America, and you're coming to one of the really low cost areas and you're looking at Nicaragua from a budgetary standpoint, as long as you have that flexibility, you are willing to do what it takes to adapt food, housing, lifestyle, activities, transportation, which are not those huge of things. Some people find this very difficult. Some people find it a no brainer. They would never even occur to them not to adapt, right? So there's a spectrum, but as long as you're willing to adapt, then the idea of whether or not you can afford one of these places, East Africa, Southeast Asia, Central America, really, if you can afford anywhere, you can afford these places. These are the most bang for the buck for your lifestyle budget, because there aren't these hidden expenses. I mean, there's always something. Right. Living in, in Nicaragua, there's always going to be a little bit of uh, migración cost, right? You got to uh, renew your passport. You got to renew your visa. You got to, you know, get an extension. You got to file for residency, like those things over time. Are they big? No, not at all. When you're on a really tight budget, do they show up in your budget? They do actually, right? But you got to be on a pretty tight budget for that to happen, but it does. And so those are things to consider. Uh, but there's no way that if you're able to live somewhere else, outside of these regions on whatever budget you have, then unless there's a mitigating factor, for example, you live for free uh, in the United States because your, your parents have a house for you and you stay there and it costs you nothing. And then you move to Nicaragua and you're like, well, it costs so much more in Nicaragua. I say, how is that possible? Well, I was living for free, you know, my food, my housing, that was all free in the United States. Here I have to pay for it. Okay, that's not how you consider cost of living. Yes, it's cheaper for you to be where people are paying for you, but if, you know, within reason, un if people understand what we mean, it, nothing's going to be reasonably less expensive. So whatever budget you have, this is where it's going to get you the most from your life, where you can do the most, where you have the most protection, where you're able to buy the most, where you have the most ability to save, whatever. This is where the best is going to be. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller 
or uh, you can join our members group, which helps with a uh, monthly fee, and it's all just about supporting the channel. We don't really have any specific benefits in there other than a super secret chat room uh, just for the members. Uh, if you would be so kind to like, subscribe, share the show with someone, and Prepare yourself for our video from Managua tomorrow that I am recording this in order to be able to do. And uh, I'll see all of you tomorrow.